How you doing, everybody? Welcome to today's webinar on, on UX design and applied innovation at ATU. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen here and take you through what we're going to cover today. Um, and if you have any questions, um, this will most likely be on social media channels, so please feel free to, to connect with us there. Just check in there, Donald, are, we, are you seeing a green screen? With yeah, you? I can see your screen. Great, thank you. Okay, so th this is a, a webinar about the, the UX Masters at, at ATU. The, the actual full title of it is User Experience Design and Applied Innovation. The course uh, came about in 2017 off the back of a, a hackathon that uh, what was LYIT did with Primerica at the time, um, Prudential's Digital Wing. So the, the, off the back of that, there was a need for user experience design in the region. Um, and then we we, uh, we got together with, with industry and actually one of our speakers today uh, was pivotal in from the industry point of view on the development of this course. Uh, and we put together this and uh, initially it was on campus, 50% on campus, 50% online. And then um, off the back of, of recent events and the pandemic and so on, we went to 100% online and have been that way for the last uh, few years. So I want to give you a, a quick overview of the course. But just before we do that, um, myself, I'm Porik Lynch. I'm, I lecture on the UX program um, I'm from a graphic design background, but I've been with ATU for six or seven years now, originally with Ulster University and then uh, came over to, to ATU and I've, uh, started working on this UX program from the beginning. And my own background is mostly from, as I say, graphic design point of view, but moved into UX more or less in the last 10 or 12 years. Our speaker today will be coming from the design and applied innovation point of view. So it's uh, Joe Dunleavy. Joe is the global head of innovation at Endava, um, and he's going to give you a little bit about his experience on the course and, and what his current role involves. And I have a, a few questions for him along the way as well. Um, but we'll, we'll start off today really with, with an introduction to the course. Uh, I'll introduce Joe then, and then I'll give you a, a brief overview of the modules and the content. Um, I'll go on to Joe now in the next couple of minutes of some questions for, for Joe at that stage, and then a quick overview of the, the MA itself uh, and what's involved in the course, funding opportunities and, and so on. And then we'll finish up within, uh, within half an hour. So really to give you a brief kind of uh, bullet point overview, it's a one year course. It takes place every Friday. Um, that's traditionally usually what, what the way it's been done. So it, for example, most of our students are working and they arrange to have that Friday off work, whether they end up working more on the Monday to Thursday to get that off or whether they're working um, with the company and they've been allowed that time off. That's that's up to them and the company. It is, I suppose, there's two semesters initially. So you have your uh, September, end of September to Christmas is semester one. That's a, a 12 week slot and then you've got uh, end of January right up to May to, to for the second semester. And you've got different modules within that, but really what you're trying to do there is get to the postgraduate diploma stage and then move on to the master's work based learning project over the summer. It is all completely fully online. We are talking this year about the potential of meeting up on campus once as well, whether that's at the beginning, middle or end. Um, I'm not sure what's happening there yet, but uh, there is planned potentially to meet up in Donegal. That's where it's, it's hosted from, ATU in Donegal. ATU, by the way, in case you're not familiar with it, is uh, Atlantic Technology University. There's really good funding opportunities this year, uh, and this is why we're, we're really pushing out this webinar to, to make sure everyone knows about the opportunities. Uh, and we've got Donald Hannigan as well, who's a, a direct contact if you need any further information on those funding opportunities, great chances for industry to support their employees or um, anyone that's looking to scale up in UX to get to avail of uh, these funding opportunities. Really around the price point, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, it's in around 5,000 euro, but with the 50% funding brings it right down to, to 2,500 euros. There is terms and conditions around that, so you can follow up uh, within the application process to find out more about that. This is really ideal for remote workers. So this masters in UX 
is designed for people that are working and people that are on the go. So a lot of the research that you'll be doing um, will be through podcasts, through articles, through Audible, you know, when you're on the move that uh, that you will be doing a lot of your learning. Uh, a lot of the collaborative work is done within within Teams uh, and also using software such as Miro and, and Figma. So there's lots, lots more to dive into, um, but before I do that, I want to introduce you to uh, Joe Dunleavy. And um, Joe is was one of the instigators of this course, one of our, our lead contacts in industry at the time. Uh, and Joe is the global head of innovation at Indava. And I'll pass over to Joe here. Joe, if you could give us a brief introduction to yourself, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks very much, Porik, and thanks for the opportunity today as well. So yeah, I'm I'm Joe Dunleavy, as mentioned by by Porik. I am based here in Donegal. I'm originally from Sligo, but based up in Letterkenny, just outside in uh, in New Mills. So my background is um, a software engineer by trade. So I originally studied in Sligo IT, which is now ATU Sligo, or part of the ATU family, where I did computer science, and I kicked off my career in Microsoft in Dublin. Where I was working in uh, testing and software engineering, uh, involved then in a startup with a couple of other folks in Sligo. Um, it was the dot com startup at the time. We did we did okay for a few years, but eventually, like many startups, kind of had to pivot into other things. And I eventually took the opportunity to move to uh, Donegal, where I worked in Primerica Systems Ireland that Pora could reference. That was the digital wing of Prudential, where I was there for sixteen years, playing various roles from software engineer into uh, uh, software lead manager. I moved to the US for a couple of years, for three years as an international rotation. That's kind of where I fell into the innovation side of the house. So I was involved in a couple of different innovation uh, activities there. And when I came home in 2015, back to, to Letterkenny in Primerica, we were building the, the brand new campus there. If you know Letterkenny, just outside the town. Um, and in there, we, we actually created a physical innovation lab and created innovation practice very much focused around the driving of disruptive technologies for our parent company. In the last two years, so June past two years, um, I now work for Endava, which is a London headquartered company that are floated on the New York Stock Exchange. And we're a digital transformation company, basically anything related to building digital products in, in technologies like AR, augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality, artificial intelligence. So whether it's a mobile app or a web app or a website or anything in between, anything digital, we effectively build that. Um, we're a global organization, 12,000 strong, operating from over 50 delivery centers across the globe. So I uh, do my role, which is the global head of innovation. Two sides to that, to help and drive innovation inside Endava and the culture of innovation and also work on my clients on anything and everything um, innovation related. So I do that role here from the from uh, remotely actually from the house. So I'm a past um, past colleague or sorry, past student of this course and certainly more than happy to talk a lot a, a, as much as we want about it and, and cover any questions they have on as well. But it's certainly a huge part of my career to date has been um, the, the value I got from this course and I'm happy to talk through it as well. So. That's my story and I'll pass it back to Park. Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm really interested in your, your role at Indava. I know you, you you joined them, I think it was pretty soon after or, or during maybe the, the, the course. Could you tell yeah. us a little bit more, I suppose, about that that role of, of how you went into that company and, and getting to your, your current role within Indava? Yeah, perfect. Um, so, I mean, I was with Primerica for, for 16 years. It was It was a long time. I loved it. It's an absolutely brilliant place to work and, and worked with many, many people. A big part of Primerica's story and its success, to be quite honest with you, and it, for those that, that are tuning in, Primerica now operates as TCS and Letterkenny, so Tata Consultancy Services. But a big, huge part of the success of the story of Primerica growing in Letterkenny to, to 1,500 plus people was the partnerships and collaboration with LYIT at the time. That's now part of the ATU family. So I very much um, what intro during my career going into innovation and so on, a lot of it was tied into I have a very strong focus on lifelong learning. So I always was looking at how I could upskill myself and that type of thing. So as a software engineer by trade, um, I started off in software engineering. Many would argue I didn't do that particularly well, and that's maybe why I ended up in the management side of it. I probably wouldn't disagree. 
But coming at um, the delivery of technology from a software engineering perspective is one side of the coin. But I think a really, really important and, and a theme that's more and more apparent is what's the human customer uh, side of the thing? Because at the end of the day, software engineers, software delivery is all about enabling customers or putting something of value into the customer's hands. So that's very much to me where I feel the user experience, user interface, design thinking philosophies really kick in. And I feel very strongly that, you know, technology done in isolation is never that successful. So as I moved into the innovation sphere, I very much wanted it to be applied innovation as a term that, that I don't know if I coined it, but certainly the team that we, we built in Primerica certainly talked about this aspect of applied innovation. And that's very much, let's understand what the customer needs or the, or the particular persona you're targeting first. Let's really understand that, critically understand that before we go and build something, because you can only really enable or deliver value if you know why you're building it in the first instance. So when this opportunity came up with this course, Porik, and we spoke about it a good few years ago at this point, I very much felt that where Primerica was going, but also where from an innovation perspective, how could we do this in a way that was very user centered? And, and for that reason, design thinking, user experience and this course was a critical angle for me personally, having the software engineering side of the, the skills I probably lacked was the design side. Uh, how do you build something for a person knowing that's the right thing to build? How do you validate that? How do you prove out the, the, the proposition before you go and building it? So when this course came up, um, to jump into it, and particularly around the time of COVID, being fully remote, it meant that I was able to kind of jump on it. So for me personally, I think it rounded out uh, the kind of two sides of that coin. I feel that any software delivery is about is doing the tech technical side of it, but also the, the human side of it as well. So that that was really a, a critical value proposition for me. Fast forward to coming into Andava, then um, when I moved into Andava in this role, we're very, very much focused on human led design. Uh, and to be quite honest with you, a big part of what we do when we deliver any client project is discovery. And that discovery, a lot of the time, is elements of things you'll see in design thinking, um, validation, user experience design, you know, prototype and rapid prototype and getting things in front of the client early rather than going building it and showing it to them after. So um, I'm glad to say one of the biggest things I picked up on the course in particular was Miro as a platform. I know it's very centered in this course. It was a huge thing for me personally. I still use Miro on a daily basis and jumping into Endava, they were a Miro shop um, day one. So to be able to hit the ground running and almost talk the language or talk the platforms that that Endava used was a really big help. Um, it's funny because inside Endava, I'm definitely one of the Miro guys and I know my own boss, Matt Cloak, always jokes that no matter what the ask is of me, I always typically start with piling the ideas together or gathering the hypothesis of the concept within Miro, it's just become a, a key tool for me. So I, I cannot speak highly enough of not just that tool, but the exposure I got to that tool as part of this course. Good stuff. Thanks, Joe. Is there, I suppose, apart, apart from, from Miro, is there anything in particular that you feel that you that you gained through doing the Masters? Yeah, I think it was the, the appreciation for the design side of, of the house, right? Um, when you're a software engineer, um, which I, uh, which was kind of my, uh, uh, the most of my career at the first kind of 10 to 15 years, you only kind of see things through a software engineer lens, right? So with the ones and zeros, it's about coding, it's about logic, it's about catching errors, making sure you're handling them in a, in a graceful way. But it's very rare that you ever ask as a software engineer, why are we doing this? Or what's the value of what I'm about to build? It becomes requirements, whether that's traditionally in something like a Word document, or in more modern agile cases with them um, with you know user stories and the likes but if you don't understand the the this building this drives this outcome is really really important so for me the appreciation i picked up on on understanding the user first and, and to be quite honest with you validating your hypothesis before you even go and build the thing it's a big challenge in the software engineering world we still build a lot of tech that we think or a gut feeling says it's, it this is needed our customers need this but unless you've actually done the steps of validating that, uh, I think that's a real breakthrough for me personally from um, from the course that I think will be a really strong uh, thing for people to have. It's almost like a tool in the toolbox. It, the skills of software delivery today can't just be software delivery skills in isolation. I really feel they need to be the, the other side of that coin. So let's understand what we're doing first before we even put pen to paper or code in uh, into an IDE. Yeah, 
completely agree. There's a, there's one one bonus that I think we we gathered from from the course over the years was the the variety of of different types of students coming in from different backgrounds, uh, different skill sets, different points on the career ladder, and so on. Um, and and I think now that we're getting into the closing stages of, of applications for for this year for the 2023-24 cohort coming in, would you have any advice for our listeners today on anybody that's on the fence, you know, that that's thinking about applying for the course? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would for sure. Um, I was a mature student doing it, so I I did it whatever it was, 15, 16 years after my original degree. Um, so there's for those people who are maybe later stage of their career and thinking god it's been so long since i did something i cannot recommend enough like it absolutely is a value you're going to learn a lot you're going to learn a lot from the others on the course you're going to learn a lot from the from the lectures i'm not just saying that it genuinely was a really really great course for me and what i picked up and it's great to stretch yourself so if you're around career for 15 10 15 years and haven't done any education a while do not let that put you off. This course is built in a way, particularly with the remote aspect to it, that you can manage it very well around your job and your uh, your other commitments in life, right? Um, but it's unbelievably well worth it. It's daunting at the start. It was daunting for me as well. Um, I had quite a bit on at the time. I have two, two younger kids and stuff as well. But for sure, um, you know, stretch yourself. If you're if you're, it, it, you shouldn't be in doubt. The course is very very valuable. I'd like to say there's nothing on the course that, that you're not going to apply in your role. So everything we covered has an application. It mightn't be immediately, but certainly at some point in the last two years, I've I've drawn on some of the stuff I picked up from the course. So if you're later stages and on the fence, for sure, you will not regret it. And it, it goes by very, very quickly. This this course is like 12 to 18 months, depending on when you do the HDIP or the MA. But it is, uh, as masters go, this is definitely one of the ones that it's very, very streamlined. It's there for you to get through it. And I, I for sure think it would be really valuable for me be somebody who's just done a degree or a HDIP that's thinking about, you know, where, where do I go next? I can tell you the skills you pick up in this course are literally the ones that are in high demand from a person in technology working with multiple clients. Um, everybody has wants the experience of user insights, design thinking skills, the use of Miro. There's nothing here that you won't use. So, it, you know, if you're trying to make yourself more applicable to the um, industry and want to have things on your CV to talk about, this course will give you a lot of skills, but also give you a lot of actual projects. This is a hands on course. You build stuff in this course. It's not like the concepts. You get your hands in there, you roll the sleeves up. So a portfolio of work, if I was somebody hiring somebody coming out in their early 20s and they've gone through this course and they've got like their catalog of content to show me it's definitely something that's going to help in showing you in a very good light to that employer because that's what they see that person go this person's going to be able to come in and hit the ground running so whether it's whatever sphere there you're on and um, you know last thing i'd say is just go ahead and do it you'll not regret it it's, it's a really really fabulous course and the skills you'll pick up will stand to you I am still using Miro even in my personal life. So, you know, you're going to get value out of it from a career perspective, but you'll also get value out of it from just how you how you run your your household or whatever day in, day out. So for sure. But I, I wouldn't be put off by it. It's it's a really fabulous course and it's done in a way that you will. It might seem like you will be hard to get through, but you will get through it for sure. The Fridays carve them out. It's it's really nicely done. You're not balancing two or three days a week. right? It's strictly on a Friday, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, Joe. There's a couple of quick ones here just to, to f finish up. Um, you're, you, you're a guy that has his finger on the pulse as far as emerging techs and so, and so are concerned. Are there any trends in, in tech that, that you're seeing daily uh, or anything that we should be on the lookout for in the near future? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a fairly uh, big question, right? We could go on. I, I mean, highlights right now certainly what's happening with artificial intelligence and the generative AI space, the so generative artificial intelligence. You can't read a, a, a book or a magazine or a newspaper or turn on Facebook right now without something about Gen AI. Um, I do want to say artificial intelligence has been around a long, long time. Usad and Dava have been working with it for 10 plus years. It feels very much like generative AI uh, because it becomes so mainstream in the conversation. It's almost like it has artificial intelligence has just been invented in the last 12 months. It has not been. I can tell you that much, but it's for sure going to have 
fairly wide impacts. Uh, for me personally, I think it's going to be a very positive impact. I think it's going to augment what we do in any sphere. And, and again, we could have a whole webinar on this piece alone, but artificial intelligence, the likes of chat GPT, Llama 2 has just come out from Meta or Facebook. There's many models coming out. There's many value propositions to become, but I think we're super early in it. There's a lot of hype out there too. But any person who's maybe do, thinking about this course or any, any customer or potential company thinking about it, it's definitely something you should be experimenting with. I'm not sure um, I'd be going all in yet because there's things around data, privacy, intellectual property and stuff that need to be factored in as well. But for sure, it's a really, really big team. A couple of others, just very quickly highlights. I think the metaverse, and again, it's a maybe one of those that's been overhyped right now, but the sphere of augmented reality, extended reality, virtual reality is going to have, I again, I feel in the, in the near term, maybe not as big an impact as people are seeing, but in the next 10 years, for sure, though that as a new paradigm, it's like a bit like the internet was, everyone can kind of get their head around it. I think the metaverse is going to be a hugely important opportunity from a work, how we work, how we engage with people, how we trade value. It's a huge opportunity. Apple aren't jumping into this and taking so long as they have with their headset. Um, anything Apple typically gets involved in, it spends this amount of money in, you know, usually is a sign of what's yet to come. So they'd be two highlights. There's many others for it, but in the interest of time, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it there. But definitely there were two, two items that should be on everybody's radar and there should be things that you should be experimenting with and playing with. Cheers, Joe. Thanks. Great insights as, as usual. Finally, um, look, we're, we're always updating the course to kind of achieve a best fit for uh, this commuter style model of delivery, you know, that we have for students. Just what interested to see if you know if your way of learning has changed or, or how you continue, how are you consuming content at the minute? You know, what's your go to channels? Yeah, definitely. In terms of learning has changed uh, uh, from a changing perspective, uh, I, I touched upon generative AI. The stuff is moving daily, Poten weekly, maybe not daily, but certainly weekly. Like you go from one language model is the greatest thing since sliced bread, and then it gets disrupted the following month because somebody else brings it out, maybe at a different price point, maybe at a different value proposition and offering. So it's extremely important to have your finger on the pulse um, because it does move so quickly. Things like Morning Brew, it's a daily newsletter. They have an emerging technology newsletter as well. They're all free. CB Insights is a US-based company. Again, what they produce, some of the time it's very US-centered. But if you're in the technology sphere, um, again, I don't think it's it's wrong to say this, but a, but a lot of people still look to Silicon Valley and America for the kind of steer on what's coming next. That may change, and I do think we're starting to see change. I mean, the rise of artificial intelligence startups and chip manufacturing in China is a clearly trend in this space. But CB Insights does a daily uh, newsletter as well, which is useful. Um, and I would say that probably my secret sauce of all of it is um, you need to be consuming podcasts. They're your friend, right? So there's some podcasts that are better than others. I don't want to say any particular ones, but I do think uh, on your commute, on your run, uh, if you're on the on the bike, but stay safe, definitely listening to, uh, uh, I per personally would listen to two to three podcasts a week. I think it's really, really important uh, because for me, it's just, it's a really nice way to consume. And for me, I don't know why it seems to stick better when I listen to it than when I read it. But for sure, be have your finger on the pulse, uh, read some stuff too. And don't just read technology. You need to have the view of why this is impactful. So like I will say one, uh, David McWilliams podcast where he explains economics from a viewpoint that everyone can consume. For me, this mandatory listening every week, because to be quite honest with you, if you don't understand economics and the business world, it's going to be very hard for you to understand why technology plays such an important part because at the end of the day technology is an enabler of business and nothing more technology people get a little bit obsessed about that but you can create the greatest app in the world but you don't have a single customer it doesn't matter so i'll finish on that brilliant great plug dave Mc, but dave mcwilliams is going to love that <laughs> it's a fantastic podcast though yeah, i really would i can't recommend it enough it is really good yeah really good uh, just, just to, thanks, thanks a million, Joe. Um, brilliant insight into your career and and how it's kind of excelled since you've you've left as well, and and how how things are going for you. I'm delighted, uh, and thanks for the positive words about the course and, and really good uh, insights. I'm going to f f finish up at this stage just with a quick overview of the the modules. Uh, you should see that on your screen there at the moment. 
So in semester one, we, we start off with uh, a UX module, which is really a design thinking module and, and getting people used to that. So if you've if you haven't worked in the world of UX, it doesn't matter. You know, this is all about teaching you that that process. Uh, and if you are coming from that world, we 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 do focus in on a mix of the Stanford and MIT models. Um, so that first module is, is really useful. So the, the other two that run in conjunction with that are consumer behavior uh, and digital markets and innovation and new product development. So you get a really good overview of uh, kind of a, a theory based uh, written report compared to um, teamwork and project work. So a lot happening in, in semester one that runs from end of September through to um, kind of mid just just up before Christmas. Then we take a break and come back into so that's your first kind of 30 credits. Then you go back into semester two, which starts at the end of January and runs to May. And then you start to follow on from the UX module. You'll start to look at uh, user interface design, which is a good follow on. So we, we start to look then at uh, applying that design thinking knowledge, but bringing it into prototype development using software such as such as Figma. But at the same time, we're also working on emerging technology product projects. So that's where we try to look at, you know, what's happened. That's why I was asking Joe about what's what's coming up and uh, in, uh, in the trends and, and what's happening. And a lot of us, we are seeing the likes of AI. Last couple of years, we focused in on the metaverse and VR, um, which has gone quiet again um, to a certain extent. But but uh, the, I suppose AR seems to be passing that out at the minute. So we might look at AR, possibly AI this year as well, but there's all sorts of opportunities there to look at emerging technologies. We also begin research methods at that stage as well. So that's really about teeing you up for. After June, when you do a work based learning project, so the work based learning project is the it's the 30 credit capstone module really that that you you do in the workplace or with a live client uh, and all our students are actually just finished that at the moment and they've um, they've completed all their deliverables and they've just had their vivas there on Friday past. Uh, and we intentionally stay away from the traditional dissertation in this space. You know, usually for, for a master's, you'll have a traditional dissertation of 15, 20,000 words. We've broken that down into multiple deliveries during a work based learning project. So ideally within an, an internship or within your own company, there might be an issue that's, that you're trying to resolve or perhaps you're 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 looking for work and, and you want to work for a live client or you're starting your own company. So there's loads of opportunities to take on that work based learning project. But the whole idea is, is you bring in that UX mindset, that design thinking workflow and you apply it to a project. And then you have those multiple deliveries. It's still the same amount of amount of work as a dissertation, but it just suits the remote worker a, a lot better. So that's kind of an overview of the, the course. If you start in September, you finish in September uh, and you graduate in October. So it's it's a it's a 12 month program. Two 12 week pro two, two 12 week semesters plus uh, an independently led 12 week final project. So that's a, an overview of the course. Um, just on just wrap it up here as well so that we have a, a short video to show you here just a, as an overview. But before I play that, um, stay with me there for a second, just kill the volume a little bit. Um, before I do that, there's an, we are taking applications now at the minute. We're almost full up, so, but there is a couple of spaces still left. Um, so if you apply now, you can do it through this link or you can scan that QR code there. But if you go onto the search for ATU, um, MA and UX and you will find the, the link to, to direct application. There's also um, more information there. You'll also be able to contact um, Donald Hannigan if you want to find out more about those funding opportunities. So this uh, at this stage, I'm going to finish off with the video here and then I'll, I'll go back to the to the main group and we'll, we'll wrap it up. The Masters in UX Design and Applied Innovation is now 100% online. You can enroll on this course from anywhere in the world. We've designed this MA to suit those that are already in work or seeking employment in the digitech sector. Two of the modules that you'll be undertaking in this program are consumer behavior and innovation and new product development. Consumer behavior primarily looks at developing user personas and getting to know exactly who your end user is. This is very closely linked then to innovation and new product development, where you're developing understanding of the new product development or service processes. And obviously you need to understand who your end user is in order to be able to utilize this. One part of the 
UI design module is the focus on design systems, and this is something that is very current in industry at the moment. Most importantly in this module, you will also develop an entrepreneurial mindset, which is seen as one of the key attributes that are required by employees to gain work with this. Feedback that we've got from students, specifically on the UI module, is that they find it very empowering. It's very practically focused, very project based. So I feel like I've got the actual real world skills that I can bring with me to my role. The fact that it was online meant that I had flexibility. I could work from home, I could work from anywhere. I wasn't really settled in terms of where I was based. The course is focused in on, on what the industry needs. UX design and applied innovation, a master's in a year, 100% online. Okay, folks, just to, to, to wrap things up then, um, this will be going out on LinkedIn and other social media channels, so please feel free to connect with us there, or you can email Donald Hannigan or myself, Park Lynch at uh, atu.ie. Um, if you have any questions, we can, we can follow up. Uh, closing date, I believe, is Friday week, so if, if, uh, if you can get your applications in before there, before then, and um, thanks very much, Joe, for, for your time, um, thanks Gary and Donald as well. Harry, if you could stay on after after we finish the recording here, if you have any questions, we can, we, but I think we could, we could finish up the recording here. So thanks for your time, folks, and uh, hopefully see you on the course in September. Cheers, Barak. Thank, Thank you. you.